if if so so at the beginning of a meeting any neighbor council uh, uh, representatives who are there to, to present their official actions which may or may not have come into the CIS that was done and then alliance members neighbor council alliance members
to promote the betterment of the community. This activity only requires funds to print doc required documents, maintain minimum standards set for operations of the NC business. $5,000 of taxpayers' money for a clock on a main street that's sure to be vandalized is a, a waste of taxpayers' funds, and it does not bring the people closer to the government as intended in the plan for the neighborhood councils. Um, originally, this plan was not to have a budget. These were to be volunteers that ensured the delivery of governmental services. Once the money got involved, the system has become corrupt, and it's now on the verge of collapse. If the NC wants five minutes to speak at council meetings and planning commission meetings, they need to also allow their stakeholders five minutes at their neighborhood council meetings. They are supposed to be our voice, not their little group's voice, the public stakeholder's voice. So if they are only going to give us two minutes or less, and in some cases I got 30 seconds the other night, or one minute to comment on 17 items, um, for me, it's okay. I've got practice now. I know how to make my statement, but not three minutes or less. But these are lay people. They cannot put their thoughts in two minutes or less and have you understand what they're trying to say. They're not that organized. So I am really for this idea of having the neighborhood council speak for five minutes, but I want the same for the stakeholders because to deny the stakeholders the right to speak, how are they going to fulfill their fiduciary responsibility to us and speak our concerns and not what they think are our concerns? They need to hear us fully. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn Bailey. Thank you, Mr. So for full disclosure, I am a uh, member of the executive committee of the Valley Alliance and Neighborhood Councils, and I'm also an, one of the officers of the LA Neighborhood Council Coalition. Um, number one, regarding community impact statements. Um, so last time I saw a city council agenda, and I can't, I can't say I've surveyed all agendas, but it, while it lists the name of the neighborhood council that filed a community impact statement, I don't recall that it said in detail that it was for or for if amended against, etc. And that would be one very basic thing that I'd like to see if it's not already being done again. It just was a little mental note I made at the time I looked at that agenda or agendas. Um, and I think instead of um, an alternative to putting down, especially when you get like 16 neighborhood councils that have filed community impact statements, they have a beekeeping ordinance rather than having 16 statements, you could just list, put, include a link like you have on the commission, your commission agenda, you have a link, a hyperlink for, uh, and you could, that could be a one line for each of those statements that could be included. Um, <clears throat> regarding the change of council file numbers, which we never get notified about, is I think just part of that process should be of duplicating, automatically duplicating any community impact statement that's been filed for the old council file could be duplicated for the new one unless it's a, you know, it, it's, it's diff substantially different. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Uh, regarding alliances, so the neighborhood council budget advocates are really, to my knowledge, the only alliance that truly has a seat at the table, has had a seat for the last several years, uh, especially budget and finance and even before city council. And so that is what I advocate um, for neighborhood council representatives is the exact same thing the budget advocate has been able to get. Whether there's enough room at the table or not, um, they are there to do their introductory comments, however long that takes, and then be there on call, if you will, if as the deliberative body changes the motion or, or has further questions. I think this is particularly important on planning and land use matters, which let's be clear, unless it's a citywide policy, there's not going to be 96 neighbor councils, even if it was citywide, there's not going to be 96 councils. There's going to be probably one or two neighbor councils, depending if the project is near the border. Um, it, you know, that's not something that can't be handled in that process in terms of as they tweak, say, a particular policy. And so in my final seconds, um, the uh, number three with regards to the funding, um, I do think there should be some 
discussion about giving priority to city departments in this process versus these other non-city entities, some of which are, um, they are, they are nonprofits, but they're like going around doing the circuit of all the neighborhood council and collecting monies from each of them. And, and nobody, nobody is looking at that big picture and seeing how much. So I think we need to rein this in some way. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Speaking as an individual, first I want to say that I, I completely disagree with one of the past speakers about neighborhood councils being corrupt. I think that is an egregious statement to make that goes out to the public. I think it defames people like myself and others who do very good work in our community, are good stewards of taxpayer dollars, and work very hard to ensure that we do what the city charter says we should be doing in the case of my neighborhood council. You know, we spend roughly 32 out of $37,000 on outreach. And I should caution Mr. Kuzman that, you know, it's not just reporting on deliverables, but it's reaching out to people to be able to report to them. So outreach is where our money should be going. Having said that, I'm gonna say it again, and I continue to say it. Why don't you pass the policy to just get rid of MPGs? Make life simple. It screws up the department in funding. It screws up the neighborhood councils. It causes 60 days of mass giveaway of taxpayer dollars, period, in the conversation. It's absolutely ridiculous that we're giving money away to nonprofits, $5,000 to the Heart Association to put something on the T-shirt with your logo on it. There's no real ROI in that money. You know, giving money to the fire department to buy a Jaws of Life God, if this city can't afford to buy a Jaws of Life for our fire department, then we're really in bigger trouble than we thought. So I just think this is the policy making group and you need to start making some hard policies. And in funding, that's gotta be by far one of the biggest ones that I, I think you really need to take a look at. Uh, as far as a seat at the table, yes, budget advocates have a seat at the table. Uh, President Mackey made a very good statement and it was coupled with a couple other people. If an alliance goes up to a city council meeting or a plum meeting or, or any other meeting and gives a position, and a majority of their councils in their district come in with the CIS against what the alliance said, it's going to completely discredit both the alliance and our ability to keep that seat at the table. So you guys aren't really big on moving fast on stuff anyway when it comes to policy. And my suggestion on this one is take your time. Because this is the one that's really going to put our backs to the wall if we mess it up. You can put something out there and you let alliances go out and just do and make a statement, and a whole bunch of angry neighborhood councils come out and say that's wrong. It's going to destroy the alliance, it's going to destroy the credibility, and you're going to jerk that ability to sit at the table and make our comments. So, this one, take your time, long and hard, because this is probably one of the biggest ones you're going to have to deal with for the long-term benefit or loss of our councils. Thank you. Okay, so, um, can I mention something yes. really quickly? Um, two things, uh, you know, uh, I think Glenn is right in terms of like, how, how um, CISs okay. are being listed on the agendas right now. There's just a list. We don't have the four against. Um, although we check, and the reason they took that out was because neighborhood councils weren't looking at the actual action so their position was conflicting with their their text. So that happened with the Greek theater. So in the end, they, they ended up having to just pull out all the for and against because they're all wrong, yeah. right? So um, so I don't think they could since put it back because they weren't sure whether the neighborhood councils actually knew what they were for or against in terms of the actual motion. And that goes to um, um, what Glenn was saying about uh, just forwarding the the CIS to the next, you know, S1, S2, and I mean, it could completely change in between, which is why city clerk has said they will not do that, but you're making, perhaps notifying the neighborhood council um, whether or not, uh, you know, they will want their CIS to, to move forward. Um, that's something that's, that I'll, I'll check the city clerk on. And the last thing, um, city attorney brought this up too, in terms of, it's the alliances, um, 
um, speaking in front of uh, city council and being afforded that status of, of being considered a city entity um, in, and of, in and of themselves, that might actually kick in some Brown Act requirements, um, some other requirements if they are recognized as such. Uh, we'll, we'll look into that, but that actually has is starting to become an issue that then that they would be subject to public records act, act requests and Brown Act, uh, Brown Act um, uh, yeah, uh, issues. Um, I, what, what this strikes me as, and you know, I know where it's a little difficult to not really think about this, but and I know you've been doing it, it's like such a great capacity building process, you know, really um, as they complete the CISs and move along and then get some support and then, you know, so that they're gradually um, really developing their skills and interact with the city. So, I mean, I don't know how much time is spent with them in this process, but, you know, once we get our um, capacity back, you know, really thinking about how to provide, you know, use this as an opportunity to build capacity seems like a great opportunity. Yeah. I, I just, yes, please. Can you clarify what, I, what I'm trying to articulate, which is that, you know, my, my worry is that, that, you know, somebody who may have been on a neighborhood council who may have been unelected from the neighborhood council goes to an alliance meeting, represents themselves as speaking on behalf of the neighborhood council, hasn't signed yet, you know, hasn't done the ethics training, hasn't done the funding training, hasn't signed the code of conduct, and then, then is voting on this issue. Or, you know, now we give them the power to file the CIS, and some business association or some stakeholder group says, well, I'm going to form an alliance of people who are for uh, development, or I'm going to form an alliance of people who are against development. And there's no hard and fast policy from the, from the department to say, well, what, what constitutes an alliance? And what doesn't constitute an alliance? So, so, so I, my worry is, is I think we, to Jay's point, we do have to get this right. I think we do know what an alliance is and who can form it because, the, as I said before, the city council adopted the recommendation from the NCRC that said neighborhood council may join together in citywide and regional alliances. So it must be the neighborhood councils to do so in one way or another. So generally that means that these people are either board members or appointed by the neighborhood council. Is that doable? 
when did when did you need submitted? That's the question here. Well, this is actually overdue for oh. us by now, but but that's fine. You know, the thing is, we can submit what the what we're going to submit, and then the alliances can still take action and state how what they want, whether they support it, whether they don't support it, alternatives to. Um, but you can definitely you have the I think you have the opportunity to contact your councils about this as well. Once once it's submitted though, if we need to make if we need to make any changes to it, are we still going to be able to after you have submitted it already? We, we I mean before it goes to um, education education neighborhoods, we'll still have to agendaize it, put it on, and and then it still has to go to city council for final approval. So there's still time. Um, I think with the request for it to come back so quickly, I'm not sure they realistically expected us to, to be able to reach out to everybody and, and get full full feedback on this before they were supposed to get the report back. What? Oh, okay. okay. I, I just wanted to remind everybody that this came from the working groups, uh, which was a com 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 yeah, composition of neighboring councils throughout the city. So yeah. Well, that's where this came from. Well, yeah, I understand that, but there was already some changes from originally what, what it had come from already. So there was, there's a couple of things that, I mean, obviously they were added on to. You know, the, the original was neighbor councils and the lines. But was, was the same language that we have on this one there? Mm -hmm. so, oh, so. Have the whole thing. Well, the whole thing that we're looking at right now, I mean, there is some changes already to it. I understand the idea came from it, but. He's mm -hmm. looking. I also know too is that that even the the plan review um, committees they didn't get into this detail. They just yeah, kind of went exactly. alliances, you know. And, and so, so I mean, it's summertime. So when is EMF going to meet again? I don't know. They they did cancel tomorrow's meeting, oh. and um, I I assume that they will likely do a special yes. meeting. Oh, you think so?
any other comments that were made at the um, Yeah, we had a meeting in the home. Oh, yes. Yeah. Were made. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay, so this is Mr. Kuzman. Um, Website development. Um, I looked at a lot of neighborhood council websites, and you know, the, I, I really like that we're trying to bring some consistency to the format of the websites. There are certain things as a stakeholder who is looking for transparency in neighborhood councils that I want to make sure get out there. If there are speaker cards submitted at a public meeting, those speaker cards should be public record. The speaker cards need to be posted on the website associated with that meeting. The reason for that is because, and I hate that I have memorized this number, but you know, according to 54960, the stakeholders um, ability to respond to a Brown Act violation requires him to stand up at a public meeting or submit that in writing. Um, so once that's done, if, there's no, if the speaker cards get thrown away after a meeting, and I wasn't there to video record that meeting, and that statement doesn't get into the minutes, and then that person turns around later and wants to sue because the Brown Act wasn't filed, it wasn't agendized, it was passed, and it affects their property rights, say, for example, they might want to sue. Well, if there's no record of them meeting at that public meeting to make their objection to the council decision at the time, they actually have no legal recourse according to the Brown Act. So when you're looking at your website, every document that the neighborhood council has that's public information needs to be posted somewhere on the website in the committee that it was discussed at or wherever. It just needs to be made be there and throwing away any document that's associated with the neighborhood council is deplorable. A nation builder presentation I saw suggested the neighborhood councils to stick with one website, period. Do not get into Twitter, do not get into social media. The reason being their logic was good. You have a lot of people you need to get their attention and you've got to drive them to one place for all your information. By driving them to one place, they will always know where to go. If you start Twittering them, if you start Facebooking them, the message gets scattered. If any of these things include a blog, and board members participate in that blog, you now have the possibility of a serial meeting occurring. So um, with the websites, I would prefer that neighborhood councils don't have Twitter, that they don't have Facebook, or at least don't have anything that would allow board members to blog in communication with other board members inadvertently or indirectly, and or with the stakeholders to form a consensus before an item comes before a meeting. So this is really a tricky area. Um, so again, I, I would like more stakeholder input to the website design, because I know there's a lot of other people I've talked to as stakeholders that have found it impossible to find standing rules or to find an agenda because of very so deep. I'm up. Thank you. Uh, Jay Handel. Hi, Jay Handel. Sorry, sorry, I know you guys want to hear that. But, but Commissioner Schaefer made a statement that just, I'm sorry, made me come off my chair. You know, and that is that the alliance, at the alliance meeting, people said they wanted it not to be policy, they wanted it to be recommended. This is the problem with our system. The inmates are running the asylum, you know? I mean, let's just make it really clear what's happening here. You know, nobody wants rules, nobody wants regulations, and in, in the end, what ends up happening is nobody gets transparency. And I hate to agree with Mr. Kuzman, but he's absolutely right. You know, I go to neighborhood councils every day, every night during the week. And what I hear and what I see is that there is very little website transparency. Trying to navigate some of these websites is a joke. I can't spend 20 minutes trying to find information. It's so much better now that the individual website on the Empower LA site has bylaws and strategic plans and budgets because the things we need to deal with at problem meetings typically can be found much quicker going there than it can from going to the neighborhood council's website. So I would again implore you guys, mandatory, policy, 
cumulative action if they don't do it. You know, I'm sorry, they're part of the system. And you can't have a system that's got 96 systems within it. It doesn't work. So, you know, there has to be a set policy. You know, you can say these are the things you have to have, and these other things could be recommended, but you need to have a set group of items that are everyday items that people can look at and know. I can go to that site and I can find anything I need. Thank you. Glenn Bailey speaking as an individual. First of all, I, I need to clarify a statement I made just a little earlier. I pulled up tomorrow's city council agenda and one of the items does have listed a breakout of the community impact statements showing four, four if amended and against as an example. I haven't seen that. And it's neighborhood councils? Yes, it lists the neighborhood councils, yes. Right. Yeah, on an issue that's really clear, yeah. uh, it's a yes or no, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not one of these ones that are, anyways, I just want to clarify that. Um, and that could be a new, new situation, you know, it's a clean council. So, um, I was, so I've already spoken on the website and I made some recommendations at your previous meetings and I'm looking forward to seeing those. But I did want to com make a comment um, <coughs> regarding a couple things that have come up uh, recently. Um, so at the Reference Valley Alliance meeting where a board member made a mention about it being um, guidelines and not. So I, you know, it's interesting because that particular comment was made by a officer of a neighbor council who hasn't posted their minutes for five years. And the reason this came to my attention, I was working on a community issue that was referenced that the neighbor council take a position on the issue in the past. So we went to the neighbor council to look at the minutes and found that um, nothing for 2015, 14, 13. In 2012, they did post, I think, three of their minutes and nothing for 2011 and nothing for 2010. So the, a con the alternative to the community was to, to, was to submit a Public Records Act request, which was done, and they did comply. But that wastes everyone's time. And it doesn't help the public dialogue. When, you know, when the public is actually interested in the issue, the neighborhood council's weighed in. I mean, that's what we're there is to advise the city, help it, make it easy for the public to be able to find it. And, and by not posting minutes for five years, I mean, that, that's really egregious. And that's exactly why there are certain things that do need to be posted, and partly to save the time of staff, because ultimately it goes to the department, because the instructions are we copy the department staff when a PRA request is made. So, you know, that takes staff time as well as volunteer time. Um, the other issue was, uh, it came up just on Friday. There was an e-blast sent out and uh, five emails based on the EmpowerLA website, two board members were returned. And, and, and the EmpowerLA website had those names on, that's what they showed. So we went to the we went to the neighborhood council website, and guess what? They didn't even list their board members on their website. So there was no way to compare if, in, in the hopes that their website was more current than a power LA to see which was you know which was. They didn't even have their board members listed. So that's very rare, but it happened as of Friday. So that's another example. And there's a list of things that I think have to be mandatory. And those I'm just giving you two real real life examples from the last. Last week and last month. Thank you. You um, wanna? You wanna? I just go on. I just want like to add something because it triggered something that we mentioned before and something that likely needs to be added to the agenda for next time. And that is the fact that the neighborhood councils have been told they don't have to take meeting minutes. So we make it as part of the recommendation that the neighborhood councils have to close those minutes.